Okay. It's eight o'clock. Here we go. All right. So oily fireside chat, September 22nd. Um, we are live on Facebook. If you are watching live, please comment that you're watching live. I think I figured out the prize wheel sufficiently enough last week. Um, again, we're not going to be catching up from the prize wheel from two weeks prior. Um, this, the prize wheel that I'm setting up is just for those who comment that they're watching live tonight. So if you want to be on this week's prize wheel, please comment that you're watching live and we'll get you on the prize wheel. And then, I don't know, next week or the week after, we're going to do just one giant prize wheel of everyone with like ketchup stuff and we'll tally everybody up and it'll be one big awesome fest. I think we'll all have prizes of some kind. Um, so, um, if you're joining in Zoom, which I don't see anybody trying to get in, um, if you want to join in on Zoom, um, it's preset that the picture is hidden and that you're muted just because we do post these live on YouTube, not live on YouTube, we post them on YouTube after the lives and we don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable um, having their face or voice posted publicly on YouTube. So. Um, if you, if you don't mind, we'd love to have you join. Um, but again, that's totally up to you whether you want to be seen or heard um, in the future. So otherwise, by all means, please do comment. Um, Janelle and I are both watching for comments on Facebook. Um, you can do comments on Zoom. Um, so that's all good. Um, I see we have Wendy and we have Sue and we have Emily. So wonderful. Thank you all for joining us live. Um, all right, so Janelle, would you like to go first? You've got little ones headed to bed. Do you want to share first? Sure. I apologize for the blurriness of my screen. My phone screen is done for. It happened 10 minutes before this started. So I'm using my very old laptop, which doesn't have a great picture, but we made it. We are here. So I guess that's all that matters. Um, so tonight I wanted to talk a little bit about um, one of the easy ditch and switch things that I did to my, in my house. Um, it was actually one of the first things that I did. Um, I got started with essential oils back in 2014 and I had a two-year-old at the time and then I had a little baby at the time. And so one of the reasons why I decided to um, opt for essential oils in a diffuser was because I didn't like um, the open flame of candles. I didn't like like the plugins that were in the wall. I always felt like my two-year-old was going to take it out and get electrocuted and, you know, worst case mom scenario. So I was trying to find something different and little did I know, the more that I learned, the more grateful that I am that I made that swap. Um, the more that I learned about candles and plugins. So over the years, I've learned a little bit more and more and more. And one of the things that is not, I don't think it's very common knowledge is how toxic candles and plugins and those little cute wax warming things are for your health. So can affect all of your all of your body systems, but specifically your endocrine system, your respiratory system, your cardiovascular system, all your hormones can be out of whack. Um, just breathing this stuff in. I had shared on my um, oily group last week, my husband and I went to go take a look at a house in the area and we walked in and I instantly got this vanilla-y artificial scent and it didn't take me long to see that there's wax warmers throughout the whole house. And we were there for maybe 15 minutes. We really weren't too impressed with the house. But we left and I had a pounding headache. I felt like I was going to be sick to my stomach. And that was just 15 minutes. So um, think about like long term, you know, day after day after day, what that can do to your body. Yeah. Some of the common offenders in your can ingredient wise, some of the common offenders in candles and plugins and your little cute wax warming pubes, I guess, um, are phthalates, parabens, um, 
and the word fragrance. So I want, I'm going to give you guys some homework. Take a look at what you've got in your house. And there's no judgment here. Seriously, no judgment. Take a look at what you got in your house. We've all been there. there. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Flip it over. And I want you to take a look and see what are the ingredients of the things that you're using to help your house smell nice. Okay. We all want like our house to be, have like that nice smelling aroma. We don't want it to stink. I mean, if I could have my house smell like warm baked cookies all the time, I would love that. That'd be great. Except the warm baked cookie smell of all the candles and stuff out there smell like garbage. So it doesn't even come close. But anyway, turn over your stuff. Take a look at the ingredients. Oftentimes, there'll be the word fragrance. Companies by law don't have to disclose what their fragrance is. It's like their trade secret, so to speak. But they can use that as a blanket term to cover up a ton of artificial ingredients, fragrances, um, you name it. It can be used as this blanket term. So when you see the word fragrance, I want you to pause and go, hmm, that's interesting. And, and, and I did that with all of my stuff. I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff that has fragrance in it. And then I thought, well, what is the fragrance? Like, what is this? And why are they telling me what it is? So fragrance, parabens, um, phthalates, those are ingredients that can affect mainly your, your respiratory system, your endocrine system, can throw all of your hormones all out of whack. When you're exposed to those things day after day after day after day, it taxes your body system. And so maybe you, um, maybe your body will respond by feeling lethargic, or maybe your body will respond by having headaches or um, things of that nature. Or maybe your body's going to respond and you are going to get a, a, a diagnosis of cancer. Guys, seriously, go and do some research on candles and carcinogen and you will be blown away of how, how much um, correlation there is between the ingredients that are used in candles and plugins and all of that and um, cancer. So I read in a book once that burning a single wick candle for one hour is the same as smoking a cigarette in terms of your respiratory system. I read that too. And the crazy thing is that, um, according to the American Cancer Society, of course, that you know, they're, they track all the numbers as far as like where a cancer is coming from. Five to 10% are from genetic mutations. So for instance, um, my husband has a genetic mutation that runs in his family. It's called Lynch syndrome. And basically long and short of it, it's a genetic mutation that predisposes um, positive individuals. So people who carry that genetic mutation predisposes them to things, primarily colon cancer. And then there's like a remote risk of bladder cancer for women. It um, can affect their reproductive systems, but that's a genetic mutation. Okay. So that's five to 10% of your cancer cases are genetic mutation related. That means that 90 to 95% of our cancer cases, and this is according to the American Cancer Society, are environmental. That means that we are in control of more than we think we are. You are in control of what you allow in your house um, and what you're exposed to on the day, on a day-to-day -day basis. So I, I'd encourage you to take a look and see what you have in your house. And we... Um, we diffuse like crazy people here at the Psalm House. I opted for the diffusing mainly because of safety. I didn't want the flame. I didn't want the, you know, the outlet plug in where my two year old could grab and maybe get electrocuted or spill the fragrance or whatever all over the carpet or all over themselves. But what, where we landed was oh my gosh, diffusing lavender and cedar wood really helps calm them. The lavender candle that I bought in the store did nothing, none of that. Um, so what we got were more, uh, more therapeutic benefits than I initially had set out to do. Awesome. Um, and if my kids knock it over, it's water and oils. It makes it's, the carpet not smell nice. it's not hot. It makes the carpet smell nice. It's all good. They've each got a diffuser in, in their bedroom 
Um, a, if you are a person who loves those little wax warmer things, great. Um, a different alternative that you could perhaps try instead would be do some coconut oil and put a couple drops of your essential oil in there rather than using the wax warmers. That'd be a, a great alternative. It works um, really, really well. That'd be a really good alternative to try. And a lot of people, um, a lot of what I get is, well, oh gosh, essential oils are so expensive. Oh, candles are so much cheaper. When you, when you price them out per drop and you weigh out the health benefits that you're getting from diffusing the essential oils versus burning the candles, it is a no brainer that the essential oils are not only cost effective, they're better for your health. Um, a few cents, honestly, each time that you're diffusing is all that it costs. And um, most and your diffuser runs for like six hours, six, eight hours, as opposed yeah. to a candle. I mean, that burns yeah. up pretty quick. Right. At least. I mean, some of my diffusers will run for 10 hours. Mm -hmm. So if I'm using, I, I usually do like six to eight drops in, in my standard size diffuser, which I think is about like maybe 250 ml, something like that. Oh. Obviously, if you've got a bigger diffuser, you've got to use more oil or more oil. But if I'm using six to eight drops and it's running for, let's say six to eight hours, that's pretty cost effective. Mm -hmm. um, so there's my little two cents about, about essential oils um, and diffusing and getting away from um, those artificial fragrances and candles. Your health will thank you. Um, your kid's health, your husband's health every, will thank you for making that, that switch. Actually, it's, it's totally worth it. I actually heard an ad on the radio this morning and it was from the National National Fire Prevention Coalition or something like that. Did you know that 10,000 house fires every fall are started by candles? Because people will light a candle. They haven't lit candles all summer and then they light a candle because they want that warm, cozy fall feeling and then they forget about it or their kid touches it or their dog knocks it over or whatever. 10,000 house fires every fall from candles. Interesting. That's scary. And there are, um, if you want that fall scent, you want that fall feel of apple pie or cinnamon spice or whatever, there are tons of diffuser recipes oh, yeah. with oils that will give you a very similar feel or smell in your house. For sure. Honestly, just thieves is good enough for me, but when I feel like playing around, there's a whole bunch of different ones that I love. Absolutely. I actually, you were talking about the warm cookie smell in your mm -hmm. house, and I accidentally, so I wrote it down, it's somewhere upstairs, I accidentally combined two oils the other day, and I'm like, oh, what smells like cookie dough? And it was my diffuser. I had accidentally combined two oils. I grabbed the wrong one off the shelf, and it smelled like cookies. It was awesome. That's awesome. Very so cool. even without a candle, you can get the cookie smell. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So that was one easy way um, that I ditched my, the things that I was using um, and swapped for essential oils. And although I didn't set out to get all of the health benefits and extra stuff, um, a wonderful it's been, it, it's <laughs> been, a, yes, absolutely. Awesome. Should I go next? Yep. I'm not sure if you need to get back to kiddos or anything, but. I think my, my little people, my little boys are sleeping, but my big kids are waiting on a hug and a kiss. Okay. So I think I will peace out and go do that. All right. My eight year old otherwise will stay up until I'm done. All right. I think yes. I can hold down the fort by myself. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> good night guys. Thank you very much to know. Sure. Bye. Bye. All right. All by myself. All right. Here we go. So this evening I have, um, I'm finishing up the laundry room for going toxin free. I'm trying to get my screen over so I can see what I'm going to read because, you know, I'm the research girl. So I love doing research. So I looked up, um, 
dangers of um, liquid fabric softener because um, a lot of people like to use fabric softener and scent boosters in their washing machine, like those downy unstoppables and like those kind of things. Um, I've been seeing a lot of ads for those. So I wanted to look up some of the dangers of that because a lot of people try to use those. They want just that little extra like fluffy, soft clothing, or they want their clothes to smell a little extra fresh. And when, like last week, I talked about um, switching out the dryer sheets to dryer bowls. And sometimes people just feel like, oh, I'm not getting that extra scent, especially if they're hanging clothes on the line, like in summertime, or if you um, have clothes that um, need to lay flat to dry. Um, although the Thieves Laundry Detergent is fantastic, if you're doing the, um, not, um, yeah, the dilution thing that Janelle shared two weeks ago, sometimes that smell isn't as strong if you don't add enough oils. So, um, rather than doing the scent boosters, I looked up, um, well, I'm sharing my recipe for my fabric softener and scent booster, and I wanted to look up, like, reasons why you should make that switch. Um, so, um, some of the harmful, some of the most harmful ingredients in liquid fabric softener include benzyl acetate. Um, benzyl acetate is linked to pancreatic cancer, along with a number of other things. Benzyl alcohol is a known respiratory, upper respiratory tract irritant. Ethanol can be linked to the central nervous system, and like I was talking about last week with the dryer sheets, anything that messes with your central nervous system is a no-go in my book. Um, limonene is a known carcinogen, which Janelle was talking about cancer causing things. Um, so that's a known carcinogen that would be in that 90 to 95% of things under your control. It's things that you allow in your household that affect your risk for cancer. Um, chloroform is a neurotoxin and it's a known carcinogen. And there are other things that are added to liquid fabric softeners that aren't required by the government to list. That would fall under things like fragrance. It's a, just a blanket term that um, uh, manufacturers aren't required to list the ingredients in their fragrance. Um, something specific to fabric softeners are called quats. It's quaternary ammonium compounds. This is what makes your clothes feel soft and wearable right out of the wash. These are known to trigger asthma and are toxic to reproductive systems. So, um, infertility seems to be on the rise lately. I have a number of friends um, trying really, really hard to get pregnant and it's just not working. It's just not working. It's just not working. Um, there are a lot of toxic chemicals in your shampoo, your conditioner, your fabric softeners, your dryer sheets, your laundry detergents that are known to cause reproductive system problems. And quats, quater, quaternary ammonium compounds is one of those things. It's a very high um, trigger point for reproductive systems. Um, so you want to check labels and product websites for these ingredients, and I'm totally going to butcher this. If you want a printed list, I can give you one. Um, but just an idea, dysterineal demonium chloride, diethyl ether dimethyl ammonium chloride, any variant of hydroxyethylmethylonium or methyl sulfate, or the vague terms such as biodegradable fabric softening agents. Um, also, anything that's labeled as a cationic surfactant should be avoided. Janelle talked about fragrance. Fragrance is another one of the things. There are more than 3,000 fragrance ingredients in common household product products, and there is no real way to tell what they are. For fabric softeners, specifically fragrance may be a blanket term for things like phthiolates, which disperse the scent, something like a synthetic musk, such as galaxyolidine, which is bioaccumulatable in the body. That means that your body never fully gets rid of it. It just bioaccumulates. It accumulates in your body more and more and more until the buildup is so great your liver can't handle it and it starts shutting down other systems. Fragrance mixes can cause allergies. It can cause skin irritation such as dermatitis or, or um, rashes. 
It can cause difficulty breathing and potential reproductive harm. Research also suggests that scents cause irritation when vented outdoors, especially for asthmatics and those sensitive to chemicals. So when you have um, fabric softener on your dryer sheets and you're venting it outdoors, if your kids are playing in the yard or if someone's walking by your house and they're an asthmatic, you're not only causing problems for your family by using those chemicals on your family's clothes, you're causing problems for other people walking by. There are a number of times that I'll take the girls out for a walk and I'll walk past someone's house and they're venting their dryer out and I can smell that. And like Janelle was talking about with the headache from being in that house for only 15 minutes from those fragrances, when you walk by and someone's venting out that amount of chemicals, you, you can feel it. Like your body actually feels that twinge of like, oh, something's wrong with it. Oh, something's not right. So be kind to other people walking by. They may not want to smell horrible chemicals. Maybe it would be better to bless them with blowing essential oils out the vent and blessing them with the calming um, effects of lavender or the energizing effects of citrus fresh. I would love to just like throw citrus fresh at the runners running past my house every morning because I'm like, oh, you go girls. I can't run. I hate running. I despise running. I will swim to the moon and back. I, I don't run. Um, like fragrance, there are terms like preservatives and colors or colorants. Um, any of these on an ingredient label refer to chemicals. Um, some of the most worrisome ones include methylazothiazolanine, which is a potent skin allergen, and another one which is glutarolol, which is known to trigger asthma and skin allergies. This glutarolol is also toxic to marine life, so please save our animals and our oceans and stop using chemical fabric softeners. Um, other ones like artificial colors, D and C violet too, um, along with some of the blues and some of the reds, these are linked to cancer and they contain impurities that also cause cancer. So these are all things on, I have a whole list, like a whole list of things with the central nervous system, pancreatic cancer. These are from like the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency's hazardous waste list. Um, and these things are in your fabric softeners. Like I'm reading it right off of their website. This is on the hazardous waste list, EPA's hazardous waste list, EPA's hazardous waste list. And they're all ingredients which are in um, the Downey branded fabric softener, liquid fabric softener. This is right off the MSDS sheets and it's on the EPA's hazardous waste list. So that should tell you something when the Environmental Protection Agency has it on their waste list, but then they have it in their MSDS ingredients list. Like, that's, that's a little concerning. Um, so what I do instead is crazy stupid simple. Um, this is my laundry softener and scent booster. This is what it looks like. Let me pull up my video so I can make sure it's in frame here. So this is what it is. This is how I store it. It's just a really nice little glass jar thing. And then I've got my little scooper in here. So I do two scoops of this in, um, right in my washer, there's that little fabric softener slot right next to the laundry detergent. Oh, it smells like it. There's citrus fresh in there. So all that this is, is two cups of Epsom salt and 20 drops of the essential oil of choice. I use two of these scoops. Um, so that's how stupid simple it is. You take two cups, I use a two cup measuring cup and do Epsom salts. And then um, like every fourth cup, so I'll scoop in a fourth cup and I'll put in like five drops of oil. And I'll do a fourth cup and put in like five drops of oil, put in a fourth cup, five drops of oil. And then I use a fork and I just whisk it up really good because the essential oil will cause like these little clumps in there because it's moisture. And then I whisk it up really good, and then I just put it in here. Stupid simple. It takes like five minutes to make. Epsom salt you can get at your Walmart. Um, do not get Epsom salt with a fragrance added into it. Um, even if it says with essential oils, it's not always pure essential oils. A lot of times they're the additive ones, or they've been you they've been um, extracted using solvents like hexane. Um, another cancer causing chemical. Um, so make sure you get the pure, unscented, original, just regular um, Epsom salt. 
Um, so this, super, super great. It softens my clothes and we have hard water. It also helps a little bit to soften the water. Um, so my washer will last a little longer with our hard water and my clothes smell incredible. I absolutely love having citrus brush in my clothes because it smells heavenly. All right, so that's laundry softeners and scent boosters. Please go natural with those. Um, the next one I have is bleach, and I didn't do a ton of research on the hazards of bleach because bleach is one of those things that you're either a diehard, I clean everything with bleach and I'm never going to switch, which I challenge you to do some research if that's your opinion. <laughs> Um, I still love you, but I think you need to do some research or you're already on the bandwagon of going chemical free and bleach was one of the first things you got rid of. Um, bleach is highly, 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 highly toxic. Um, I did, totally thought I got rid of all my bleach bottles. My father-in-law was over a couple weekends ago and found this bottle of bleach like in the corner of my basement and I freaked out like I thought he brought it to my house. I was like how could you bring that here like my girls like and drink that and like die. I mean that stuff was horrible and he's like I found it in your basement. And I was like I, <laughs> I haven't used bleach in over five years. It is so so bad for you. Um, the, the thing if you if you don't know this I could literally be saving your life. Never, ever, 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 ever mix bleach and ammonia together. It creates this toxic gas that will, like, dissolve your lungs from the inside, your respiratory system from the inside. So never, ever, 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 ever mix bleach and ammonium together. Um, ammonia together. So bleach, um, just some basic generic, you type it into Google, dangers of bleach. Bleach is very irritating and corrosive to the skin, lungs, and eyes. As well, it has been known to burn human tissue internally and externally. On top of this, it may cause skin rash, extreme headaches, migraines, muscle weakness, abdominal discomfort, esophageal perforation, nausea, and vomiting. That's, that's just using it. That's not drinking it. Drinking it will cause death. So bleach is very, very dangerous. I do not have any in my house. I have now checked my house top to bottom. It's gone. Um, so what I use instead is something called flake, fake bleach real clean. So this is just a really nice um, alternative to bleach. It works super, super well. It whitens my clothes. This is um, the spray bottle one for cleaning my shower and my sinks and tiles and stuff like that. Um, junk outside, like toys or if we get like some mold on something I use this um but this is my fake bleach real clean if you're a diehard purist I've wiped every single chemical from my home this specific combo may not work for you because there is one cup of hydrogen peroxide in here Hydrogen peroxide for the purists is a debatable topic because hydrogen peroxide in its pure form is toxic. The hydrogen peroxide you buy from Walmart in those little brown, like in the first aid section bottles is only 3%. The rest of it's been diluted down. So at 3% hydrogen peroxide, if one of my girls drinks it, will they get sick? Yeah, but will it kill them? No. So I would much rather use a 3% solution of hydrogen peroxide that is then diluted further down. This is like a 1.5% hydrogen peroxide solution now. Um, I would much rather that than bleach. <laughs> Given the option, I'd rather go safe than safer than death. So um, my fake bleach real clean combo is one cup hydrogen peroxide, two cups of water, two capfuls of Thieves household cleaner, and 30 drops of lemon essential oil. You don't have to go that heavy on the essential oil um, for lemon, but I love lemon, and lemon has natural bleaching properties, like for clothes. Um, so if you have a white shirt and you spill grape juice on it, uh, first step, go with the stain stick of Thieves household cleaner. Did I share that for the, the laundry room? Was that last week? All right, real quick. If you want to get rid of your shout stain stick or your OxyClean stain stick, get a 5ml roller bottle, roller ball bottle, um, glass, and fill it with straight Thieves household cleaner. 
put the little rollerball top on, screw the cap on, keep it in your purse, keep one in your laundry room, keep one in your bathroom, keep one at the kitchen table for when a toddler spills something. Um, that's your new stain stick. Works great. Get it on there right away and it'll take pretty much everything out. I haven't had anything yet that it doesn't take out. So there's your stain stick. Get rid of all your stain treatment stuff from your laundry room. After that, if you have a white shirt and you spill grape juice on it, you didn't get Thieves Cleaner on it right away. It's been sitting there for a couple of days. The lemon in here is a natural whitening agent along with the hydrogen peroxide. So both of those work to get whites whiter. So again, this is a nice spray bottle for cleaning tub, shower, tiles, countertops, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can put it in a like an old Thieves uh, laundry detergent bottle. You can um, peel the label off of that and then you can write fake bleach real clean on that and then you can use that for bleaching like your towels or whites or bed sheets or whatever you have. So that's what I have. I think that wraps up the laundry room. If anyone else has anything else from the laundry room that they would like to switch out to go um, chemical free in their laundry room, let me know. I think that's everything. Janelle covered laundry detergent. I covered dryer sheets last week. Um, now this week we've covered laundry softener, scent booster, bleach, and I did a real quick tutorial on stain sticks. Um, I think I'm just checking comments to see if anyone has any questions and then we'll do our little prize wheel business. Emily says she doesn't really <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, B says she loves the fireplace. Oh, thanks, B. Uh, Aunt Wendy says, good job on those big names. Yeah, thanks, Aunt Wendy. I totally butchered most of them, but that's okay. Thank you for the support. <laughs> um, I think that's it. I don't see any questions from anybody. So with that, let me plug names into the prize wheel here for those watching live. So I see Emily, I see Sue, I see B, and I see uh, Wendy. Do I see anybody else watching live? I don't think so. All right, so there's our prize wheel and you each get two entries because you're watching live. All right, let's see, can you, now you guys get to see all of my wonderful tabs open because I never close anything and my computer constantly runs like crazy. Okay, share screen. Let's do this one. Okay. Okay, I really hope you guys can see this because I don't have a backup person to tell me if you can see it or not. So there we go, ready? We've got Emily! Yay! So Emily is our winner for this week. I don't know what the prize is. I'll pick out something really super awesome for you and get it in the mail. Um, if you have something you need, let me know and I can try and whip something up. Or if you've seen a past prize that you're like, hey, I wanted to get in on that one, let me know. I can see if I can hook you up. So that is our prize wheel for everyone watching live this week. And hopefully next week Rose will be back and we can catch up on all of the lives who watched last week, all of the lives who watched this week because you all get one entry for next week. And then the lives from last week get one entry. And then anyone who commented, shared, or posted for the week previous will also get an entry. So that's going to be one giant prize wheel. I'm assuming we'll do like three or four different prizes because it's like three weeks worth of stuff. So if you want extra entries into that prize wheel next week, um, by all means, share this video, like this video, comment on this video, and um, be sure to tune in live next week because you get two entries every time you turn you tune in live. So I think that's it. I'll check one more time if there's any other questions. I don't see any personal messages on my phone. I think that, <laughs> Emily, I love your, that's awesome. I'm also the same with the tabs. I'm so glad it's not just me. Oh man. All right, cool. I think that's everything. I don't see any questions. So I'm going to hop off. I've taken up a good 35 minutes of your time. Thank you for joining me this evening. This has been fun. 
Um, if you need any of the recipes for these, like in a printed method instead of like just written down, I'll pause it here for a second. So if you need to take notes, by all means, go for it. Otherwise, you can just pause the video right here, get a better angle on that. And then, because I know Emily takes notes. Um, so, awesome. If you need a printed version of that, just let me know and I can message it to you on Facebook Messenger. Aside from that, I think I've covered all the housekeeping stuff. Everything Rose told me to mention. Janelle covered her stuff. So, I'm going to sign off. You guys have a wonderful evening and we will see you same time, same place next week. Bye!